Everyone, welcome to the Business Growth Pod. I'm your host, Alan Draper. I look like I'm telling ghost stories, or I'm about to. Um, for those that are just listening to this, the, the video podcast, um, you know, it shows me in a, in a dark room. I'm in a uh, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. I'm here for a business conference, and um, my room's all messy. So you guys didn't want to see that. So we're just gonna go for it here. Um, you know, I'm really excited about our guest today. Interesting guy. I like I like talking to people that are a little different. You know, that do have some different life experiences. Um, I consider myself to be in that category. Before we before I introduce him, before we get started, make sure to subscribe or follow this podcast, whatever platform that you listen to it on. And all as always, leave me a review. It helps more people find the podcast. Um, and help get this information in the hands of startup entrepreneurs that are looking to build their businesses. Today, I'm excited to welcome Will Pemble. Check this out, guys. Will built and sold web.com, which is one of the largest web hosts on earth. Okay, Will has been building and growing businesses of all shapes and sizes for over 25 years. Um, his success extends well beyond the business world. Um, he's, he's known worldwide as Coaster Dad. You're going to have to check out his YouTube. Um, Will and his kids have built several backyard roller coasters um, that have been fe featured all over the place. Good Morning America, Discovery Channel, CBS News, all of that. Um, so we're excited to welcome Will. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thanks, Ellen. Um, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, you know, you have this diverse background. I kind of consider myself a uh, uh, a lot of times I say I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. I, I dabble with a bunch of different stuff, have businesses in a bunch of different industries. And it's, it's nice to chat with somebody that has this kind of diverse skill set. Um, let's talk a little bit about your background. T tell me how you got in, involved in your first business and, and where that has taken you, you know, in your career. Sure. Well, the... Um... The, the best way that I've found to kind of describe, uh, explain myself, if you will, is, is to say that sort of my entire adult life has been an experiment in the, in, in the avoidance of adult responsibility. So, <laughs> so I, I never really wanted to go to school. I've always been curious and energetic about things, but I never really wanted to sit still through class. I never wanted to uh, uh, had had no use for grown up things pretty much all my life up up to this up to this day. So um, when when my parents told me it's like, look, you're not going to be the first person in our family that never went to college, so you're going to college, and that's just the way that is. Um, I chose aeronautical engineering at a school that also taught pilot training, and so I went to school to learn how to fly airplanes. I did not go to school to learn anything else. Um, the interesting side effect is that if you go through pilot training, and I'm a commercial pilot, and I've got a few thousand hours I'm in airplanes and all that, and I, and I know how to do that stuff. I did that because I didn't want to learn anything. And what I learned was skills that have, have, have brought me through so many different situations. As a pilot, you learn to look at things and see things and think about things in ways that you couldn't learn any other way. And, it, and, it's, and it's super potent. Um, once upon a time, somebody, and so like we started working with computers, me and my buddy Dean and a couple of other guys, we started working with computers because there was no use for them when I started working with computers. We were just like fiddling around with stuff in the garage. And we started web.com because me and Dean were sitting around one day thinking, you know, it'd be cool is, is if we could get that computer over there um, to, to spool up a web hosting account at the other end of the room without having to walk over there and actually touch the keyboard and stuff. And so that, that was how we built. What year was that, automation. Will? Oh, dude, this was back in the 1900s. This was a, this was a long <laughs> time ago. So um, yeah, it was a long time ago, early, early nineties. Um, and, and so what happened was sort of the things that we were working on got interesting to Wall Street. And so Wall Street and money guys and business people and yep. grownups came along and said, hey, you with the shorts on, get over here and do some stuff. Right. So I've been incredibly lucky all my life that the things that I thought were fun and cool and exciting uh, ended up being of use to different people. But, but I never went at it the other way. My, my intent was always to learn something or help someone or do something fun or avoid 
some grown up thing. And, mm-hmm. and the side effect weirdly um, has been that I've been, I've been super fortunate to make a little money, help a lot of people and, uh, and, and share some experiences that, that like normal people would never sign up for. And so yeah. that's, that's kind of how I explain it. I, I, I think about the, the activity, the thing, the idea, the crazy first, and then something adult happens downstream from that. I, I don't feel like I'm explaining exactly. No, what I, I, no, I, I understand. I understand completely. And, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Richard Branson's story, right? It, um, I, I read his uh, autobiography and, you know, he just early, early on. So his very first business was actually Virgin Records, right? Yeah. Which is now one of his smallest of all of his billion dollar companies. Yeah. But he just loved music. He loved hanging out with his friends. He, he, you know, they started a record shop and then they started signing people and um, I think there's this great question that goes around, something that a lot of entrepreneurs that I speak with, they wrestle with, and that is, hey, do, if I'm starting a business, do I need to or do I want to follow something that I'm passionate about, that I really enjoy doing, that I would do even if I didn't get paid to do? Yeah. What are, what's your answer to that? Well, my answer to that, and it's and it's not... I think it's I think it's actually Steve Jobs' answer to that, and I and I subscribe to it fully. I think I think what um, what Steve said, and 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 we may get a whole lot of no, that wasn't him in the comments, but I'm pretty sure what mm-hmm. Steve said is, you better do something you love because very early on in whatever it is that you do, it's going to make a whole lot of sense to quit. It's going to oh, be yeah. like the right thing to do is to quit, and and if you don't love it, you're going to quit, and. And no one will blame you, and that's the thing. I was I was uh, I was scrolling through the Facebook the other day, and I saw um, a, this. You know, they show you your little memories, and so it was like eight yep. years ago um, this month, or eight years ago last month. Uh, my son Lyle and I started work on the first backyard roller coaster, and there's been five. Um, and there's a picture of the backyard roller coaster, and there's little Lyle, and he's about this big, and now he's like taller than me. It's <laughs> life is crazy, and. What I thought of, and so so Lyle, my son, is the guy who came up with the idea for the roller coaster, and it was the end of the summer, and there was a vacation that was over, and we were sad because school was going to start and all of that. And he was like, he was like, uh, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be great if we had a roller coaster in the backyard? And it and it took me, Alan, five seconds, not even five seconds, to to think two things. And the first thing I thought was, when he's thirty, when he's forty, when he's fifty, when he's a dad. He's going to remember that I I did this thing with him and we did this together and he's going to be the guy whose crazy dad built in something in the backyard and he'll have that forever and I'll have that forever and that was the first thing I thought and the second thing I thought was this is going to be the exact perfect opportunity for me to prove to my big brother how much better of a dad I really am <laughs> and so, so the, <laughs> those are like equally weighted considerations yeah and it all happened it all happened in less than a second. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And so eight years after that, and, and if I'd have said no, it's like, gee, son, that'd be cool. But you know, we got to start school and insurance and reasons and adulthood and roller coaster in the backyard. Nobody would have faulted me if I said, well, you know, I wanted to build a coaster, but of course I said, no, it's like, yeah, of course you did. That's crazy. Yeah. But, but if I had said no, if I had done the reasonable thing, instead of being powered by curiosity and love and joy and competition with my brother and crazy, um, if, I had, if I had just done the rational thing, there would have been no Good Morning America. There would have been you know, no Netflix. There would have been no, I've gotten clients from having built a roller coaster that I never could have gotten from having built a $200 million crazy. company. And so, so like my thesis is, say yes to as much crazy stuff as you possibly can because you can always come to your senses later but if you say yes now you're going to learn things and meet people and answer questions and ask questions that very few of us get to enjoy so so yeah do the crazy thing do what you love you can always apologize and clean it up later if it doesn't work out but you'll never know if you don't step all the way out to the edge of the thing. Yeah, you know, 
this this concept reminds me of this this idea that at the end of our lives, you know, w- whenever that is for us, it's coming for all of us, right? But whenever that happens, you know, if we're laying in our proverbial on our proverbial deathbed, that we're going to regret a lot more the things that we didn't do than the things yeah. that we did. Yeah, and, 100%. And that's the thing is we're talking to entrepreneurs, right? My listeners, they're in different stages of, of building their businesses. A lot of them are, you know, I'd say 50% of my listeners are within six months of pulling the trigger on starting their business. And that message that you just gave, you, right, we can, we can kind of analogize them pulling the trigger with, on their business with you deciding to listen to your son and build a roller coaster in your backyard, right? It's, it's, um, and, and never throughout this podcast, if I said starting a business is, is easy, it is, it's one of the most difficult things I've ever done. And, and yet I continue to do it. Um, yeah. and, but, but the attitude is, is right. Say yes. As entrepreneurs say yes. Is there a chance you're going to fail? I just I just had a business meeting this morning and my business partner, he told me, hey, Alan, I want these guarantees. And my first thought was, if you want guarantees, don't go into business. Right? Yeah. And, yep. and, if you want and guarantees, thought, invest in gravity. <laughs> exactly. My second thought was, if there were guarantees in business, then everyone would do it and it wouldn't be as profitable and, you know, and, and enjoying and, and, you know, joyful and all these things. Um, so I, I just think I, I love that attitude. I, I love, you know, that perspective that we need to say yes more. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think on, on the flip side of it, right, because, you know, I've got a reputation as like a crazy lunatic, a, a friend of mine, Rafe Needleman uh, in San Francisco, Rafe, a uh, great, awesome, wonderful, smart guy. He, he described me once, he used to write for Yahoo and all that. And he described me once as um, Mr. Rogers meets batshit crazy. <laughs> and, um, and so, and, and I didn't, you know, it was just like, dude can write, he can write, really, he's, Rafe is awesome. And, and so, yeah, Mr. Rogers meets batshit crazy. And so there's a whole yeah. lot of that that goes on in my life, right? I built a fireball machine to impress the kids one day and there's, you know, there's other stuff going on around here. Um, but here's the thing of it. That shit crazy all by itself doesn't get you there, right? So you, so you can be unique and crazy and exciting and that's all fun and charisma and yay. Um, but on the other side of that, um, maybe that's kind of like the tip of the iceberg and, or, or I hope is the tip of the iceberg. But what's, what's beneath that is a mile deep of process and planning and key metrics and goal setting and measurements and accountability and the ability to seek and accept candid timely feedback. And and as a leader, you step up and take responsibility, not just for the things that are going wrong that you created, but everything else, right? Um, That's going on in your sphere, right? You know, one of my people screws up, that's my fault. Something in the organization goes well, I do something great in the organization, that's theirs. They succeeded. And so, so again, the, the fun, I like to think that, you know, sort of like the, you know, the Mr. Rogers meets batshit crazy. That's what gets me in the room. And that's what gets me to start a lot of things. And then as soon as that starts, what keeps me there and what drives me forward and what, it, what enables me to deliver for my people is, is, a, a seriousness, if you will, not solemnity, you're not, you know, not like hair shirt monk sort of a thing, but seriousness and commitment and focus on the mission and the goals and the people that I serve. Um, and, and that's why we built the goal boss system. That's why we built the leadership and management system that we did is so that we could say yes to that crazy fun stuff mm-hmm. and vastly increase our chances of being successful because, because like you said, you know, it's like, is starting a business easy? No. Are you going to fail? Probably. <laughs> so that's, that's just the stats, but you can, you can, you can focus on those things. And so I really do try to bring as much energy and, and passion to what a lot of people would consider the mundane and the boring, but, 
but you know that stuff needs doing and it needs it needs you need to be able to quickly express and understand what's going on in the business i can tell you how my business is going as fast as i can tell you how it's going at the bottom of the ninth in a baseball game that's the goal in our absolutely in our business conversations, right? absolutely well let's talk about that a little bit let's talk about goal boss let's talk about what you created what you're trying to accomplish through that program and how it's helpful to um, especially younger entrepreneurs, right? A lot of my listeners are within six months of starting their businesses and up to about two, three years after where they're starting to really scale their companies into multi-million dollar companies and businesses. What, what is Goal Boss? Tell us a little bit about that and some of the things that you focus on for these young entrepreneurs. Sure, sure. Um... Cool. So Gold Boss is the leadership and management system that we built back in the 1900s in the web.com days. And I'll tell you right now, we stole every single bit of it from Peter Drucker, who, uh, again, yeah. a guy Legend. from the early 1900s, the father of modern management. And, and he is, in my view, uh, Peter Drucker is the Will Shakespeare of business, right? We are all stealing everything from yep. him. If you're a writer, you steal everything from Shakespeare. And if you're a business person, you steal everything from Drucker. That's just how that goes. Um, what, we, what we took from Drucker that we liked the best was these three components. There's, um, there's key metrics, which is a way of understanding what's important and measuring it. There are goals, which we set on a 30-day rolling monthly basis. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this done. And we have a, we have a very tight, uh, well-tuned goal-setting methodology. And then we also have what we call team problem solving because once you decide in your key metrics what's important and how to measure it, and once you set goals to move the needle on those key metrics, you will run into trouble. You will fail, you will stumble, you will fall, and that's all perfectly fine and part of it. What team problem solving does is it allows me in 10 minutes, literally a 10 minute conversation, to assemble a group of people, either in my own organization or remotely if I'm, if I'm a one man band, um, and lay out the problem, get feedback and suggestions from the people that I'm talking to, and then choose what are the action steps that I'm going to take um, in, in the near term, like as soon as this thing is over, what are the action steps I'm going to take to solve those problems so that I can get back to moving the needle on my key metrics. And so key metrics, goals, team problem solving, that's the whole darn deal. Um, Goal Boss also has a, a, a meeting system because I hate meetings so incredibly much. <laughs> I'm just like, it's, you know, it's just like, oh my God, meetings. So what, we, what we've done is we've designed meeting agenda that keeps things moving at a good clip, keeps things focused, kind of like if you think about uh, a scripted television show, everything everyone says in a scripted TV show, a cop show would be the best example. Everything that everyone says moves the conversation forward, gets us a little bit closer to understanding, you know, who done it, why, what's going on, resolution. And so we show up to meetings prepared, we get them done fast. And so one of the things that we do for people in Goal Boss is we just like cut, literally cut meeting times in half. Um, Love that. And yeah, and then, and then the other thing, and then this is another, this is another Steve Jobs thing is, you know, one of the, you see these memes all over the place. It's like, you know, we don't hire smart people and tell them what to do. We hire smart people and they tell us what to do. Goal Boss is similar to that in that we hire smart people and they tell us what they're going to do. So yeah. we don't, imagine being the boss of an organization and you're never having to tell somebody what their job is or what their goals are. You just ask good questions and they'll tell you what their job is and what exactly. their goals are. And then Goal Boss allows you to hold them accountable to those solemn promises that they just made. And so, yeah. so that's the whole system and particularly for we're we're thinking of we're just about i'm gonna do it um we're gonna set up a what i what we're gonna call goal boss mastermind which normally we work with big clients the c-suite you know 30 mm -hmm. 40 000 a month you know really really fancy uh and that was that just happened because i wanted to find out how much somebody wouldn't pay us um and it turns out they won't pay us like Forty thousand one dollars, but they will pay us forty yeah. in a month. So it's like okay, but but like you said earlier, I would do it for free. Every single thing I do, I would if you 
caught me on a weekend or at a cocktail party or something like that. It was like, hey, can we talk about business? I was like, hell yeah, let me yeah. get my markers. <laughs> you know, we yeah. Let's do it. But so we're thinking of putting together Gold Boss Mastermind, okay. which is, which is going to be um, a, groups of about 12 entrepreneurs. And these will be like, you know, one man band startup people who need, um, who, who have the talent, right? And I, I love threes of things. And so I think it takes, I think it takes three things to be really amazing in business and, and make a really good go of it. You gotta, you gotta have talent, right? And so if you're not talented, you're not passionate, then there's really nothing anybody can do for you. But if you have talent, you're still going to need two other things. You're going to need tactics. So you're going to need an action plan and a game plan, and you're going to need to be held accountable. And that's where that key metrics goals, problem solving, those tactics are going to come into place and you need those. And they're really hard to get when you're just a little bitty startup, one man band, or it's just like maybe you and your partner or you and a friend. Right. Um, and you also need a team, right? You need a group of like-minded people. And, and where that comes from is I, I really do believe that I'm the average of the five people I spend the most true. time with. Right. It's cliche, it's but just, it's true. It's cliche, but it's true. Right. You, you throw an ice cube in a bowl of water in very little time, that ice cube is going to be the same temperature as the rest of the water. Yeah. So, so if my circle is Liz, who's my bride, we just celebrated 30 years the other day. Congratulations. Um, That's we awesome. Went, we went to Disneyland. Thanks, man. Never took a lesson. But, but if it's Liz and the lady at the grocery store and Andrew, who I think you've had a little bit of back and forth with, and then like maybe some other people, Kent, who walks his dog up and down the road, if, if yeah. that's my team, I'm in big trouble. And so like what I need is I, I need you, Alan. I need, I need you and people like you right. to keep me up here because it's because it's a it's a lift all yep. the time in business. You're always like holding something over your head. Yep. And if I don't have you cheering me on, if I don't have other people cheering me on, if I don't have people who know what it's like to be inside batshit crazy, yeah. uh, which is what it takes. If I don't have you, I'm screwed, right? I can't survive. And that's, and that's why we're trying to figure out a way to deliver this, you know, $40,000 yes. a month worth of goal boss and vibe and support and love and passion to people who are just getting going at, at, at like a, uh, yeah. you know, and so this is kind of like, this is like, I'm on a mission on this one because I just, I can't bear to watch another entrepreneur struggling 80% of the time with the effing voices in their head. And yep. that's what we do. It's like, no, this will never work. And then, you know, yeah. you know the spiral as well as anybody else, right? That, no, there's, you, yeah. you know, it, it, it's kind of funny. So I'm, as I mentioned, I'm here in Vegas uh, for some work conferences, doing some networking. And um, I had one of my vendors take us out to this, you know, fancy dinner last night. Um, and we were talking to the, the waiter was trying to figure out who, you know, who the bill went to. And um he started telling us this story about how he had this table of about, you know, six or eight people that, and they played the credit card roulette, right. Where, you know, he chooses a credit card and, <laughs> and that person pays for the bill where that, well, this bill was, you know, $1,800. And yeah. he said the guy that he pulled the card was really nervous, had this look on his face, like, Oh no, what did I do? And then I started talking to, you know, some of my business associates that were at the table with me. And I'm like, well, that guy, whoever that was, was sitting at the right table, right? If he, you know, felt pressure to pay for that meal where the other people didn't think it was a big, big deal to them, he was, yeah. he was surrounding himself or she was surrounding herself um, with the right people, right? Because I'm yeah. always looking for people that can that can bring me up. They've done something, you know, whether it's spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, professionally, the things that I haven't done because like that ice cube, I'm going to become like those people, right? Yeah. And so sometimes it takes this concerted effort. Sometimes it takes money. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes frustration, whatever the case is. Um, to be surrounded with those types of people. So this mastermind mm -hmm. sounds like it's this kind of group where 
it's, you know, you, you get that where you're surrounding yourself with people that maybe not in all aspects in life, but in at least some, maybe professionally or financially, they've done some things that other people haven't done. And just because of that fact, they can bring others up with them. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And I, and I, and I totally, I totally believe that if, if I, let me, what's the best way to try, describe this? I try all day, every day to be like the dumbest guy in the room, the, the loserist guy in the room, right? I want yep. people, you know, and it's easy in this conversation. It's like, no problem at all. It's, but like, I want people to look at me and say, you dumb mother, you know, I just, that's, <laughs> I want, because then if I'm around those people and yep. they're just like, they're wondering how I got in here. Yep. Awesome. Right. I've got stuff I can learn. And that's, and that's, that's what we want to do with mastermind. And then the other thing is um, it's very hard as a small business person to be a salesman and a product manager and an accountant and a yeah. scholar and a, no, they get spread too and a thin. web designer. They get, spread, you get, way too you get thin. spread too thin. And they all take different mentalities, right? A social media analyst is not the same thing as a, you know, a suspension installer or yeah. whatever. And so through mastermind, what we want to do, which is way beyond what most of most masterminds are, we want to, we want to make sure that I was talking to a guy named Al in uh, uh, LA the other day. And, um, and Al was saying, yeah, I thought up a new name for my business. I think it's going to be really great. I was like, oh man, that's fantastic. What a great branding idea. And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get, uh, you know, we're going to get logo and all of the things. And, and I was like, really, you've, you've got experience in that? He was like, well, I'm going to find, you know, and just basically no is the short answer to that. And I was like, and so I was like, what's the name of the business? And he tells me the name of the business. And then I go back and I get on with, get on Slack with my gang. And I'm like, look, I need a brand package, right? I need five logo comps. I need you to yeah. pick out fonts. I need a color palette. I need a style guide. Um, just make me a branding Bible. And I need it in 48 hours. And my gang can do that like faster Jeez. than you could get something from Amazon. And, and so then I get it back and my guys do it. And I, he didn't ask me to do it or anything. I was just like, it was one of those things, you know how it's sometimes it's just like painful to watch. It's like watching the little old lady yeah. try to like get out of the car. You're like, Oh dude, just let me, let me help. <laughs> um, and so then I got this and I sent it over to him. I was like, let Al hear this yeah. is, I think what you were talking about, you know, if there's any one of those five logo comps you like, let me know and we can change them. And then this, here's it in different color palettes. And he's like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. I was like, dude, I just, I couldn't bear the idea of you struggling with this for yeah. six months and coming up with something that wasn't very good, just not because you're stupid or dumb or any of that sort of stuff. It's just like, you don't do it all the time. Yeah. And so that's what I want out of mastermind. I want, you know, so like, so in that particular teeny little instance, my little gang was the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. And we were able to do this for him instantly and, and think of all of the things if like once a month you get together with your team, your, your mastermind team, and it's like, I'm struggling with this. I need help with this. I need help with this. You know, I got to make videos. It's like, oh, well, then you should talk to Ben Hoffman because Ben Hoffman is a gun right. at video. And as part of the mastermind, you get the bro deal, right? And, and so we just, we help each other and not just by lifting each other up and doing the things that usual masterminds do, but like, let's get into the dirt a little bit. Let's yeah. get tactical and, and push each other forward. And if you need something like that brand kit or whatever, it was like, right. you know, look, dude, this. Um, so I am, as you might imagine, uh, insanely stoked about this idea. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm still not entirely sure how we're going to make a whole lot of money on it, but it, yeah, but that's not the point at the yeah. moment. Money, money happens. I don't. Have, I don't worry about that. I worry about the other guy, and money takes care of itself. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. So we're. Yeah. I'm like super, super that's, stoked. That's I think fantastic. That, yeah. So I was. You know, there's there's this concept of you know when you buy the smallest house in the neighborhood, the larger houses naturally bring up the price, right? The price per square foot of a house that, you know, I do a bunch of real estate, residential real estate investing, and the the smallest house is brought up per square foot by the larger houses. And it kind of made me think of this, that when you're, let's see how to phrase this, when you're the, when you're the smartest person in the room, it serves your, your ego. When you're the dumbest person in the room, it serves your uh, development, right? <laughs> That's a really, really good, yeah. 
And, yeah. and so we and should I, all compete to be the dumbest guy, right? <laughs> exactly. It's it doesn't feel good. You feel uncomfortable, right? You you have imposter syndrome, and so it's it, you know this is emotional turmoil, this cognitive dissonance going on. But if you're just like, hey, I'm going to set that stuff aside, and I'm going to focus on my development, that's the best thing for you. Well, this yeah. this is this is fantastic. I'm excited to see what you're doing with this mastermind. What goal boss is is continuing to do. Well, where do you want people to find out more about what Goal Boss is doing, what you're accomplishing, and how they can possibly learn more about this this mentorship program and mastermind? Sure thing. The best thing to do is to go to goalboss.com, G-O-A-L-B-O-S-S, -S, goalboss.com, mm -hmm. and on the top nav, you'll find a link that'll be like, it'll say, it says something, it'll say something like, you know, get your free book. It, by the time this podcast uh, re releases, it'll be there. So okay. top nav, click the goal, you know, get a free copy of the book. Um, so you can get a free copy of the Gold Boss book. You can get it in a PDF. You can also get it in audio format, all of those things. And we'll ask you for your name and email address. And then we're going to reach out and keep people updated about awesome. Gold Boss Mastermind. But even if Mastermind doesn't click for you, uh, you should read the book or listen to the book because we lay out, you know, 22 chapters. It's like, it's really, it's really hard to write a book. Um, but yeah, go to goldboss.com okay. and get the free book. That's, that's where all of this begins. Love it. Well, it's been a pleasure, Will. Um, I can tell that our personalities jive. I can, you know, I can sense the vast experience, vast business business experience that you have and the success that you've had in your career and uh, wish you nothing but uh, future success. Yeah, right back at you, Alan. I'm super glad we're pals. All righty.